I just recorded two hours worth of footage from multiple videos without my microphone on. <laughs> G'day guys, welcome to Yenna Beauty. My name is Tanya and I'm your personal little guinea pig and today I want to talk to you about my 2021 wish list. Now, I know 2021 is not over, but I didn't want to talk to you about Christmas items because I just... I just I, there's nothing really this year that I that was really pulling me. The things that I really wanted haven't even been released yet and may not get released. Now, the reason why I wanted to talk to you about wish list items and whether or not you have a wish list or whether you don't, doesn't have to be beauty, it can be anything, anything that you want throughout the year, is because I find that I tend to think about myself a little less often than maybe I should, right? Um, for whatever reason, it doesn't really matter. And when I want something, it sort of pops up in my head and then it's gone, you know? I just, I don't end up pulling the trigger and buying something. I'll actually go into a store, see something I like, look at the price tag, freak out, put it down and walk away and never look back. Um, but what I found that by having a wish list, putting it there, um, I found that you know, I can look back on it and later pick it up and be excited. And it's been helping re me with my mental health. And if my cup is full, then everybody's cup is full. So that's the reason why I have a wish list and um, it's been working for me. And um, I think it's good, you know. And sometimes it also helps me be accountable too. I mean, if you're an impulse buyer, if you put something on a wish list and you keep it there for a little while and you still keep on wanting that, you know, a week later, a month later, even a year later, you know that, you know, you can pull the trigger and you're not going to have too much regret. But impulse buying, you buy it and then you've got this instant regret. Should I have brought that? Is it too much? Should I have waited? Could I have waited? Is it on special now? Wish lists can be really, really useful. And, um, very helpful too. Do you ever get to the point where people are like, what do you want for your birthday? What do you want for Christmas? And then you're just like, I don't know. Hmm. Wish list. If you've already got a wish list, you can go, well, I have been wanting that, 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 that. It's so simple. You've got the answer right there on your phone or on your notepad or whatever you use. And, um, yeah, so anyway, today I wanted to talk to you about my wish list. It is a rolling wish list. So a rolling wish list is basically, I started this one in 2018. And um, some things roll over to 2019, some things roll over to 2020, 2021, etc, etc. Anyway, but before we start, I wanted to let you know that if you hear any noises in the background, I do apologise. I'm using a new microphone, it is a shotgun one, so theoretically it should drown out a lot of the noise, but I do have people home today, so apologies for that. And um, let's get into the video. Alright, so the first thing that was on my wish list was the Jack Black Intense Therapy Lip Balm. This was on my list in 2020 as well, um, so yeah, it ended up rolling over onto my 2021 list. And the only reason why I haven't picked this up is because I'm having trouble finding it anywhere. So I think I'm going to have to have a look on YesStyle to see whether it's there. It's not in some of the other places that I knew it was. I think it was on iHerb, but anyway, I digress. I can't find it. and. I also wasn't in a rush for it because I've got two lip balms on the go right now that I really do enjoy. One of them actually I think it was on this wish list that I have picked up, but we'll talk about that soon. So the next thing that I had on my wish list was the 4-in-1 Per Love Your Selfie Foundation. This was recommended in a video by um, Raw Beauty Christy and I really wanted to get this because she just looked absolutely amazing wearing this. Um, but it was another one that was really hard to get. I think you had to get it from the website itself and I couldn't be bothered with the postage and the blah blah blah. And I already had some foundations on the go and I don't like to be wasteful. So I wasn't going to purchase this until I'd finished one of the two that I already had. So there's that. Um, but it is still on my wish list, and I'm probably going to have it on my 2022 wish list because I, really, I would really like to try it. The next thing that I had on my wish list and still do and still will transfer onto my 2022 wish list is the Tatcha the Liquid Silk Canvas Primer. Now I'm not normally a primer girl, I've tried quite a few, it just they haven't really done anything different for me and I couldn't sort of justify the cost. I couldn't see good enough results to justify it. So, but this one keeps on pulling me back. And um Teresa is dead keeps on talking about this one and She's one of the ladies that I really do trust with her opinion, so I really do want to try this. I'm just not sure if I'm going to pull the trigger on it. Um, I kind of should because it's right now on special with a Mecca pack. I'm just not sure. Anyway, the next thing on my wish list is the Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Intense Perfume. 
I like this. I really, really like this because it's citrus, but I'm not in love with it. Like, I don't want to bathe in it, but it's a citrus one. It's a citrus perfume, and I can't find anything better right now that I like. So it's on my wish list, but only because I haven't got anything else that I think is better in the citrus form of perfume. So I do want to get it. I'm not sure if I'm going to put it on my 2022 wish list, but right now, not. I just need to sort of sit on it for a little bit. The next thing on my wish list is the Shuamura Cleansing Oil. Now, I don't care which one I try. Let's move over so you can see the pictures better. I don't care which one I try. I want to try them all, but they are really expensive and I'm not going to pay full price for it. And um, I ended up picking up a different one. I ended up picking up a different brand and a cleansing balm. Um, I like to use either oils or balms. And I picked up the Pharmacy um, Cleansing Balm and I really do like that. And a few people have said that there's not much difference between the quality and the product and the usability of the Shumura uh, cleansing oil opposed to the pharmacy cleansing balm. So because the cleansing balm from pharmacy was cheaper, I picked that up. But if I can get a hold of the Shumura cleansing oil, any of them um, cheaper or with a docket, a coupon, then I definitely will try it. But right now, I've got no need for it because I've got plenty of uh, cleansing balm. So... The next thing I wanted to pick up and I haven't is the Inglot Sparkling Dust Face, Eyes and Body Loose Highlighter. I actually thought that I'd pick this up, but I didn't. Um, I made a boo-boo. So I saw, I think it was Kat from um, Kit Snitch, also Beauty News, wearing this and she was bragging about it. She looked absolutely stunning, gorgeous, like absolutely stunning, natural glow. I can't, like, I can't explain it. Like lip from in, she looks stunning. And I wanted to look like she did or to feel like she looked and I wanted to get it. And um, I ended up picking up a different one from a different brand. It was like uh, NARS Fort de France or something, which don't get me wrong, absolutely beautiful as well. But that was another one that she recommended and I kind of got mixed up and it was on sale. So I picked up that like in a rush and didn't think. So when I brought it, I was expecting the results that I got from, um, that Kat got from the Inglot one. But I... Uh, I didn't quite get that. I got it and I realized it was it was not the same one. But I, I'm, I really do enjoy this NARS one. I'm wearing it today. I don't know if you can see that or not. But it is stunning and beautiful as well and I don't regret that. But I do want to pick up the Inglot one. It is on my wish list. It's going to go on my next year's wish list as well. The next thing that was on my list, in fact, it's still in my shopping cart right now, is the Ole Henri Hen Henriksen Lemonade Soothing Scrub. I really want to try this and every time that it's in stock, because it, it, trust me, it gets sold out really, really quick. Every time it's in stock, I chuck it in my cart and I'm like, oh, should I pull the trigger or not? Because it's like $40 Australian, right? And if it was 30 or less, I'd be like, boom, brought it, but it's 40 And that's when my brain starts going, it's getting, it's getting a little bit expensive for like a rub-on wash-off product, right? Um, I know, it's probably silly, but then it gets sold out and I'm like, damn, I should have pulled the trigger. <laughs> anyway, I really do want to try this, and it's it's citrus. I mean, I've got to try it. I've got to try it. I want to try it. It's going to be on my wish list. I am going to pick it up. I'll let you know when I do. The next thing that's on my wish list, and I think that it might end up going on my wish list for 2022, I'm not sure yet, is the Wayne Goss Face Palette in Light Gold, primarily because I need a, um, I need a face palette. All I've got right now is... Um, a Mecca contour stick, which I, I really do enjoy, um, and the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer, which I don't enjoy because of the scent. So I really do want to try another sort of face palette, bronzers, um, contour powders, whatever. This one popped up and, you know, people are talking good things about it, so I am definitely interested. Um, so that will probably go over to my uh, 2022 wish list. I'm just not sure if I'm going to pick that one up or something else. The next thing that was on my wish list, which I haven't pulled the trigger on, is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Universe palette. Look, when they were talking about this before they released it, I really, really, really wanted it. I even enjoyed the packaging, but I've heard some mixed reviews, and that's kind of made me a little bit nervous because, like, it's $100 or close to maybe a little bit more in Australian, so I'm like... Ooh, now I like the colors. I like what I'm seeing. I like the packaging. I don't like the price, but these mixed reviews are making me nervous. So mm, I'm not going to pull the trigger on it right now, and I may not ever end up getting it, but it is on my wish list. It's still going to go well on my 2022 wish list, but I need to sit on it for a little bit. I need to see how I feel um, for a little bit longer because it's a, it's a fair amount of money for something that who knows, you know. 
Anyway, maybe I just need to wait to find um, somebody more credible to me talking about it and see how they feel, and then I'll make a decision based on that. Anywho, the next thing that was on my list was the Huda Beauty Wild Jaguar Parrot, this bad boy right here. And I really, 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 really like it, guys. But I've got like 10 eyeshadow palettes in my stash, and lately I have only been using one. Um, a little bit embarrassing, but... The last couple of years with this pandemic, I haven't really been playing around with a lot of makeup. I wanted to, but this the mental health hasn't been there, and or the need, the desire. I don't know what it is, but I really shouldn't be going out buying more eyeshadow palettes right now when I've got so much already. I mean, I know 10 might not sound like much to some people, but it's a lot for me considering that a few years ago I had one. Um, <laughs> and I've had one most of my life, you know. Um... So yeah, I really do love this. I'm just not sure yet whether I'm going to pick it up in 2022 or not. But that one shade. Mm. Anyway, let's move on to some of the products that I have picked up, which is the NARS Highlighter in Fort de France, which is what I'm wearing today, as I said previously. Really, really love this. Can't recommend it enough. I think it's stunning. I think it'll work for a lot of people, mainly uh, fair-skinned ladies and blokes. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoy this. The next thing that was on my wish list, which I have picked up, was the Mario Badesco Lip Balm Tube. I love this. It does have a slight taste of coconut to it, which I'm not a fan of, but it is so um, gentle, so light, that it doesn't really annoy me that much. Uh, the whole family quite enjoy it, actually, and it's a good formula. Yeah, I think, it, I think it's good. I really do enjoy that. The next thing that is on my wish list was the Pixie Glow Tonic, which I have picked up, and I'm not going to give you... Um, any sort of recommendations on it because when I tried it the first time I tried it with the pixie milk mist at the same time and one or the other product um, had a really bad effect on my skin I'm not sure which one it is right now but I'm um, I've had a break and now I'm currently trialing them again and I'll let you know but right now I'm, I'm a bit iffy about the product so I don't know but I did pick it up and so it's off my wish list now the next thing that I picked up, and I absolutely regret this, is the Bang & Body Firming Lotion. So I did a lot of research with this because obviously it was a lot of mixed reviews. People were banging all over it. <laughs> banging. Uh, people were talking about it all over Facebook, and um, the reviews were very mixed. You know, there was 50% there was of people saying they absolutely love the smell. You know, other people thought it was putrid, disgusting, horrible. Um, then there was topic of... The price was too much, the product doesn't go far enough, etc, etc, the product doesn't do anything. But I wanted to try it for myself. Um, I'd heard a couple of people talking about it and I was definitely disappointed. When I put it on my skin to begin with, I was like, ooh, I like the smell of this, right? But then after about 10 minutes, it started to make me feel kind of sick. Um, and then I started to realize the amount that I needed to use to cover the parts of my body that I wanted to put on. And then I got what people were saying, it's definitely not worth it, um, the value-wise product. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'm just disappointed. I really didn't enjoy this product and, um, yeah. But anyway, I got it and, uh, now I know and now you know. <laughs> anyway, guys, the next thing that I picked up is the Ordinary Natural Moisturizing Factors plus HA Cream from The Ordinary. Um, I, I enjoyed this. It is just as good as my regular moisturizer, um, but it comes in a bottle that's half the size, so it's kind of a little inconvenient. It doesn't have a pump, um, and it takes a little longer to rub in than my other moisturizer, which is why it's my second favorite moisturizer, not my first. But definitely give it a go if you want something that's pretty basic, does the job, um, affordable. It's nice. It's not scented. That's another pro. Um, yeah, what can I say? It's, it's a good product, so uh, give it a go. The next thing that I picked up was the Skin Iceland Hydro Cool Firming Eye Gels. I love these things and they are always going to be a part of my stash. If I see them, I see them on special or whatever, I'm going to grab them. I think they're amazing. Um, yeah, so far, my favorite eye gels of all time. What can I say? There you go. Give them a go, guys. I think, I think you'll like them. Um, let me know. The next thing that was on my wish list was the MAC Studio Face and Body Foundation, which I did pick up, which is what I'm wearing on my face right now. Um, I really do enjoy it, um, although I can't use it with, um, I can't like apply it with a brush or, or a sponge. Typically I would use a sponge and I find with this you have to use your hands, you need to sort of warm it up and you really need to meld it into your skin. So that's kind of annoying, but I really do like it and um, 
yeah, it seems to be working for me. I don't know, I guess. Uh, I wanted to try it mainly because a lot of foundations actually age me. They make me look older than I really am and not in a good way, right? Because I've got like, I've got bags, I've got wrinkles under my eyes, like it's absolutely horrible. <laughs> and um, I wanted to find like a foundation that had a thinner formula and this has a thinner formula. And I think that this one looks better on me than some of the other things that I've used in the past. So I'll probably buy it again in the future, but I do want to try some other things from other brands first. So hmm. the next thing that I got was the Jeffree Star Ice Cold Highlighter. Now this was on my 2020 list. Um, and I did pick it up this year and I kind of, I regret it, but not for the reasons why you think. Like I regret it because it is such a massive highlighter, like it's massive, right? And I only brought it to highlight the inner corners of my eyes, the tear ducts, and I'm never going to use it all. Like you could put it in my grave. It's, I won't be able to hit pen, <laughs> not in my lifetime, not unless I end up using it like all over my face and my body, which is not going to happen, right? Because I, I don't want to stand out to the aliens like I'm not I, I like a little bit of bling but not that much right um so I love the product I think it's amazing but um I really shouldn't have brought it I think it's a little bit wasteful so anyway um I did buy that and I really do enjoy it I just think that maybe I shouldn't have pulled the trigger on that one the next thing that I got was the Jeffree Star lip scrub but I I wanted to, I didn't care what flavor I got, but then they had the Shane Dawson edit as well, and they had the root beer, and I was all over that. And, you know, I don't regret it. I love everything about it. Um, I When I first got it, I was disappointed because it was like this such a little tub, but the amount that's in it, like it is packed to the brim, and you don't need that much. It's going to last me a very, very long time too, and the price is pretty damn good as well. So um, I'm not, I'm not going to complain. I really do enjoy that, and I do recommend it. And the next product that I had on my wish list, which I did pick up, was the MAC Painterly Pop, which was also on my 2020 wish list. And um, I picked it up. And the only reason why it took me so long to pick it up is because I couldn't figure out whether I wanted Painterly or Soft Ochre. Um, so I kind of figured out that Painterly would probably be best for me um, because the Soft Ochre is a little bit more yellow tone. And uh, I don't regret it. I love everything about it. I use it all the time and it definitely, in my opinion, extends the longevity of my eyeshadows. So therefore it's worth it in my opinion. And the last thing that was on my wish list for 2021 was actually still on my wish list from 2019, which was the Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks. Now, I didn't really care what colour. I was kind of looking for maybe like a rose gold or, you know, a silver or something. I don't know. I kind of wanted to get it so I could put it on my bottom lash or even into the corner of my eyes just to sort of make it pop. And also so I didn't have to run a, um, a makeup brush underneath my eye with um, shadows, right? But the only reason why I haven't pulled the trigger on this is because I've picked up some sample um, sort of shadow sticks from Mecca and, um, and Bella Box and I can't remember the brands, but they are good quality. And so like, I've not used them that often. They've just been sort of sitting there. I, can't, I forget to use them and I'm worried that if I pick up this Laura, Laura Mercier one, a little bit more expensive, that I'm just gonna be wasting my money because it's gonna be sitting there and I'm not gonna use it. So that's the only reason why I haven't pulled the trigger on that. Um, it is still going to go on my 2022 wish list. But yeah, that's what concerns me is buying something and just sitting there going to waste. Um, yeah, and I can't see I can't see why I would be wrong. If I've got these other shadow sticks that are good quality and I like the colours and I'm not reaching for them, then, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to justify spending the money to get that. So there's that. Anyway, that is everything that was on my 2021 wish list. Most of those things are going to go onto my 2022 wish list. Whether or not I pull the trigger on them, I guess we'll find out later on next year, um, including all the things that I decided to put on my wish list for that year as well. But, you know, I do hope that you got something out of it, whether it was just to hear my opinions on some of the things that I already have or just to be reminded of some of the things that are out there. And I would really love to know whether or not you have a wish list, whether it's helped you, especially psychologically or mentally. Um, I, I feel that it has for me and it's done amazing things for my self-consciousness. Um, yeah, it just, it just did. So I hope you got something out of this, guys, and I really do hope to see you in my next video. Bye.